So last time we showed that if the state space is divided into a set of tiles of the same size, which can be mapped into each other by a finite group, then we can replace a function define over the whole space. We can write it as a vector of four functions, rho 1, rho order of the group, x tilde, where x tilde is in the fundamental domain. And it's defined by evaluating the function, original function, on the fundamental domain, or taking a point in fundamental domain, and mapping it into the second tile, and evaluating the original function there. Taking the point in fundamental domain, and mapping it into the last style. State space is divided in such a way that one tile can cover the whole state space, then it's very natural to do all the computation just in one tile, and describe all the functions as vectors of functions, whose dimension is the number of the tiles or order of the group. The next question is, what is evolution operator in this representation? If we originally had that function rho prime evaluated at point y in a state space, was given by the original function, evolution of set time equals 1. Now we have to define a new object. Which will have to be a matrix. Matrix lambda. in which both the initial and final point are on the fundamental domain. And that maps this vector of functions into next set, all of them defined on the fundamental domain. So what is this function? So here is my fundamental domain. First image, second image, and its last image. Depending on finite group, there could be any number of elements in this. And what I have to do is I have to take a trajectory which starts someplace in this space and add someplace else, so it's evolved from x to y in a big space. By evolution operator lambda of y x, and I'll assume time is unit time, And I'll ignore the weights of general evolution operas, so this is just put on for Benius, but works out in every other case like that. Symmetry reduction says that there is a group element, which I'll call A, that maps this point into its 
fundamental domain system, and there is another group element. So I'll call this A, I'll call this B. This group that maps the whole tile, in particular, maps the endpoint Y into its image in the fundamental domain. So we can write this as still the evolution law in a full world, but the endpoint is now written as A times and final point is B times X in fundamental domain and Y in fundamental domain. And the law is still the original law. And now we use equivariance. Equivariance says that if I take any point in state space and apply to it a symmetry operation in the group element. And if I evolve this point using my law of motion and I put the result back into original coordinates, the law of motion doesn't change in form. So, in the first step, we partition the state space by observing that it can be tiled with the copies of something like this floor, but tiled with the copies of a single tile. But now we make a much stronger assumption saying that the law that moves around these tiles is equivariant. It doesn't change shape if you start in any other tile. And we use that here. So we multiply both sides of this by G. And we simply commute the symmetry. Next thing we do, we factor out one of these group operations. So we write B times. This is a matrix that doesn't deform space because our assumption about symmetry group is that these are mappings of the tile that are basically rotations and flips. So this matrix will have a property that determinant of any group element. Its absolute value is 1. So we can write this as a delta function of y delta minus. And here I'll write h, and I'll define h to be go from the initial point to fundamental tile, evolve using the full law of motion, and put the final point back into fundamental tile. And I can define this object because this combination starts in fundamental tile and ends in the fundamental tile. So I will now define this as symmetry reduced dynamics. It's dynamics that keeps us in a fundamental tile. And the way this symmetry reduced function is computed exactly as I tell you here, you look where the initial point lands, where the final point lands, you bring them both into a fundamental tile, and the product of these two operations gives you the relative motion between the two elements, and it's thing that you know from uh, translation and rotation invariance that 
the symmetry reduced action only carries the difference of the two translations and rotations. But, you know, now it's a more group theoretic thing. So now I know that this evolution function can be written as lambda acting on initial final point, I'll give it a tilde, and if this is rho of x y prime a, the index of this thing, then this will have an index a, b, and this is now the initial rho index A and summed over summed. So just matrix multiplication of the vector. I guess I can write it. Sum over the group indexed by the element of the group. And this has very simple form. I've computed the part that has to do with evolution. So taking a point in the tile and landing back in the tile that's given here. But then I have to impose this condition. So I can impose that condition by writing a Kronecker delta function, saying that I want delta of h to equal the product of these two things. So you can imagine that A and B run over some index range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I want the inverse of the group element, which is some index by something, times this to be the product to be element H. In that case, I pick up a contribution. Otherwise, I don't. And this thing has a name in theory of finite groups. It's called regular representation. So it has to be, in this case, four by four matrix because there are four elements. And in general, it has to be matrix whose size is the order of the group. So it's a matrix. It has to have two indices, B and A. So this is size of the group, order cross order of the group matrix. And it depends on H. And it turns out that this is one representation of the group. And that's what I'll do next. I'll discuss regular representation and show you that this actually is one matrix representation of group operations such that the uh, multiplication table is realized by that representation. So what matrix representations of group are, they can be any size depending on your problem, but they have to satisfy the multiplication table of the group. So if you multiply two successive matrices to correspond to two different H bars, I mean H's, uh, their product should be a matrix, which is a representation of that thing. And one very special and very sweet representation is regular representations, as I'll show you. This only depends on the multiplication ta table of the group and doesn't care one yota whether you are doing this in 70,000 dimensions or three or you're flipping something or, you know, which parti or rotating something, which particular physical implementation of your group you have. 